everybody and welcome back to my channel ED here and I'm so excited because I'm back with another reaction video and this one I'm very excited about because my first reaction video I reacted to this girl and I wanted to do another one of her videos because this one she has posted a couple years later so I'm very curious to see if she has changed, if she stayed the same, if she has anything new to share but for those of you that haven't seen that video or maybe don't remember, the first video I reacted to was from Stargirl, The Practical Witch. And this is one of her videos. And this video is called How to Make Contact with Your Spirit Guides. And then in parentheses it says easy. So I'm assuming that's like a beginner's level kind of way to get in contact with your spirit guides. So let's get into it. I'm excited. Hey what's up guys, it's Stargirl and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you guys how you can make physical contact with your spirit guides. Now I want to warn you if you're someone who gets spooked easily or if you're someone who's not used to making spirit contact, these things may shock you because after you implement these steps you will make physical contact with your guides and it can be quite shocking if you're someone who's not used to experiencing paranormal activity. So make sure that you are ready to actually make contact with your guides before doing these steps. Now, I Dang, already off the bat she's like paranormal activity spirits like I, if I was watching this for the first time I would be a little nervous. I would be a little scared. I also want to say that everybody on this planet has a spirit guide, yourself included, and everyone has the ability to make contact with their spirit guides. You don't have to be a channeler, you don't have to be a medium, you can just be an everyday normal person. Now the first thing you need... Okay, that's a very interesting point that she has brought up. I gotta say, you know... Maybe when I was like just getting into this stuff at the beginning, I was really, really obsessed with spirit guides and wanting to know who my spirit guide was. And it was very much like a glamorous kind of thing. Like, oh, is my spirit guide this angel? Or is it, you know, this archangel? Or is it this really cool guy in a robe? Um, or is it this really good looking Jesus that comes in? And I gotta tell you guys, like, as I've gotten older, as I've gotten more into this, what I realized is your spirit guides are like, they're a part of you. They're not outside of you. They're, they're inside of you. So they're, if you guys are trying to connect with something and you're calling in these beings and you're using specific names like Archangel Michael, Archangel Gabriel, or calling in Jesus and you're like, you know, calling certain things into your field, you have to be really, really, really careful because at this point in our world and at this point, like, with how scary the world has gotten to and how um, chaotic the world has gotten to, you could imagine that the energy of the world is also at a really low place. And it's very, very easy to get tricksters in and to get, you know, beings and energies that just really aren't for your highest and best good. So I like to remind myself that everything I need is already within me. There's no need to really call for these angels, quote unquote, because everything we need to know is already inside of us. We are our own spirit guide, if you will. Like, we already kind of know everything about the universe on some layer of us, so... Just putting that out there. What you need to do to make contact with your spirit guides is you need to open up your crown chakra. Your crown chakra is located at the very top of your head and it radiates a bright purple light. It's important to open up your crown chakra because your crown chakra is what connects you to spirit and the divine. Now it's actually really easy. So there's so much like misinformation about the chakra system and what each chakra really does. Just for the record, like, first of all, let's say you do open your crown chakra. Yeah, you could be opening your crown chakra, to, but you could be opening it to creepy demons or to ghosts or to spirits or to like low vibrational kinds of beings and energy. So just because you open up your crown chakra, that still doesn't protect you. That still doesn't mean you're working with 
energy that's for your highest and best good. So just by merely opening your crown chakra, that actually in a lot of ways could put you in a very unsafe kind of environment where you're working with beings that you don't really want to be working with. And it's all a matter of like knowing who you are and getting to know your own inner demons, your own emotions, your own triggers, because just because you're like open to something doesn't mean that you're not allowing certain things in. You have to be very, very conscious of clearing your energy, of knowing exactly what feels good to you and knowing when something is for your highest and best good versus something that isn't. So, yeah. See, to open up your crown chakra, you don't have to do a crazy ritual or anything like that. All you have to do to open up your crown chakra is right before you fall asleep while you're laying in bed, play 963 hertz on a speaker while you are falling asleep and listen to it while you sleep that night. All you have to do is type in on YouTube 963 hertz frequency and you can listen to a bunch of those frequencies online for free. These frequencies actually open up and clear your crown chakra so you can receive messages from the divine. Now, if you want to go above and beyond, another thing you can do is right before you fall asleep while you're laying in bed, close your eyes and envision a bright purple light swirling out of your crown chakra. This visualization technique will actually help open up your crown chakra a lot faster and also help you become more connected to the divine. Generally, it only... So like, your crown chakra is not necessarily purple, I don't really know like where she is getting this information from. Also, doing anything before bed, it can be really tricky because basically what happens when you're falling asleep, and sleeping in general, you go into what a lot of people call the astral plane, what I like to refer to as like the fun house or you're basically going into la la land you're going into dream world and basically like when you're dreaming when you're going to bed what you want to create you create when you're asleep and you're in a dream you think of your ex-boyfriend your ex-boyfriend appears you think of your cat your cat appears in your dream you think of a million dollars a million dollars appears in your dream so doing anything before bed your consciousness is already getting into a space to kind of go into that kind of realm where a lot of it is mental, a lot of it is, you know, projections and reflections, and you're not really seeing things exactly as they are. So I personally would not recommend you do this unless you want, you know, some ghosts and goblins and, you know, people posing as like Archangel Michael, but really it's a spirit to pop up you know, as you're sleeping, because your sleep, you're not really protected against that stuff. I mean, you got to really, really clear your energy before you go to bed, because like I said, like, the dream world where we go and we sleep can get very, um, very, like, playground-ish, so yeah. only takes one night of doing this before your crown chakra is ready to receive messages. So like I said, very easy, very short, very simple. Now once you do that, the second thing you need to do is you need to give your spirit guides verbal permission to be in your life. And the reason for that is, is because your spirit guides never want to spook you and they never want to go against your free will. So if you want them to manifest themselves to you in your life, you have to pray to them and say, spirit guides, I invite you to manifest yourself to me. I want to have a relationship with you. I'm ready to receive your guidance. I allow you to become a part of my life. Once you say this prayer out loud, you are giving them verbal permission, and as soon as they get that permission and you open up your crown chakra, they will start to manifest in various different ways in your life. Now, one thing you have to make sure of is that you are a vibrational match to be able to perceive your spirit guides. 
Your spirit guides are higher vibrational beings who live on a very high dimension. So in order for you to perceive them, you have to be at the right vibration. And what I mean by that is, you can't just do these steps if you want to prove spirit guides are real or because you want to see something creepy happen. You have to do it because you honestly want a relationship with them and because you honestly want their guidance. It has to come from a true and genuine place. Now, once you've done all of those steps, your spirit guides will start to manifest themselves to you rather quickly. So all you have to do now is start looking for the sign. Okay. So there is a little bit of truth to what she's saying. Yes, ask and you shall receive. Yes, in a lot of situations, we have to ask questions in order to get the answers. But here's the thing. Maybe at some point, like a couple years ago, maybe a decade ago, like maybe our spirit guides were like outside of us. But at this point in the world, at this point on earth, everything we need to know is already inside of us. We are our own spirit guide. We have what's called an intuition inside of us that literally knows everything that you could possibly want in answer to. Your intuition knows where you lost your car keys that you can't find in the morning. Your intuition knows whether you should go on a date with this person or not. Your intuition knows whether someone, you know, is not for your highest and best good or not. Your intuition knows whether you should, you know, drink oat milk versus dairy. Like, seriously, like, there's really no need to be searching for answers outside of yourself from these spirit guides because everything that you could possibly need is already inside of you so you know that can get really tricky especially if you're just getting into this like nine times out of ten if you are just getting into this and you call forward your spirit guides you're gonna get something really creepy you're gonna get something that's not good now at first your spirit guides are going to manifest themselves to you in very small and subtle ways. And that's because your spirit guides don't want to scare you off and they want to ease you into their presence. So one of the first ways your spirit guides will try to make contact with you is by showing you number synchronicity, which is 1111, 222, 333, 444, or really any number sequence that you see repeatedly throughout the day. This is a sign that your spirit guides have heard your prayers and they are now around you comforting you and giving you guidance. Now another small way your spirit guides will start to manifest themselves to you is by high pitched ringing in your ears. Now it's very important to pay attention to what it is you're thinking when you hear this high pitched ringing because generally when your spirit guides show up as audible sounds, they do it as a way to bring your attention to something you've been thinking about or as an answer to your prayers. Now another small way they'll try to manifest themselves to you at first is by putting loud thoughts in your head. So if you notice when you're sitting there and thinking, the thought in your head is normally in your own speaking voice, right? I mean, if you're not sure, go ahead and try it out right now. When you think out loud to yourself in your head, well, born in the colony of Atlantis, I remember everything about our it's in your voice, but your spirit guides will actually show up as a different sounding voice in your head. When you think thoughts, the voice might be a male voice or a female voice if you're male, or it might be a different tone of voice, and that's because that voice is actually your spirit guides speaking through your thoughts. Now another way your spirit guides will try to first manifest themselves to you is by animals and insects acting strangely around you. And Okay, you know, I know everyone would like really like to believe that, you know, when they see a number like on the clock, like let's say 444 or 555, everyone would like to believe it's, oh my god, it's my spirit guide, like oh my god, this is confirmation. No, not necessarily. What I've learned, you guys, is a lot of the times we think and we overthink, that's just what human beings do. We think way too much and our mind and our ego gets involved. 
So basically what's going on, when you see a number, it is your intuition's way of telling you like, shut up for just five seconds so I can distract you because you won't stop overthinking so I can download something into you. It's not necessarily your spirit guides being like, oh my gosh, this thing that you've been obsessing over is what you should do. No, it's because you're not listening to your intuition and you're overthinking and you're usually stressing yourself out. So seeing a number is really the only way for your intuition to get you to distract yourself for just long enough for a piece of information to come in. And also like the way she's describing this, like the very specific things about like how your spirit guides will manifest themselves to you, like maybe that's what works for her, but that's not necessarily the case for everybody. So necessarily like it, like this could not be true for everybody. So you guys, if you hear high pitch ringing in your ears, like if you hear weird voices in your head, uh, that does not necessarily mean that something really good is coming into your field. So just the key is getting to know yourself as best as you can, getting to know your intuition as best as you can, because this is like not one size fits all the way she's describing. Your crown chakra might not necessarily look purple to you, and by her telling you this, you're going to force your brain to see your crown chakra as, as purple, when maybe for you it's pink, or maybe it doesn't even have a color, or maybe it's orange, and so this is like kind of painting the picture for you and like kind of forcing yourself to see things that she's seeing but we're all different and everybody has their own symbols has their own way has their own language of what makes sense to them so this is not necessarily true for everybody and this is actually very common if you have a deceased loved one as a spirit guide for instance one time i prayed to my spirit guides and asked them to manifest themselves to me and when I was sitting on my porch, a moth just started landing on my hand and I tried to squat it off. I ran to the other side of the yard and this moth kept following me and landing on my head. And then I remembered that before my grandma passed away, she told me if she could come back as anything in her next life, she would come back as a moth. So one of the most common signs a deceased loved one is your spirit guide is a animal or insect acting very strangely around you. Now, if you have an archangel as a spirit guide, another way they'll start to manifest themselves to you at first is by showing you images of themselves or showing you their name repeatedly throughout the day. For example, so yes, a lot of the time seeing certain animals is a way that people who have crossed over will communicate to you. So yes, totally. That can happen. A butterfly may come by and you immediately think of a certain person. That could be your intuition's way of telling you, you know, that someone you love very near and dear is okay. So yeah, animals totally can bring lots of signs. However, what happens when you become so obsessed with seeing signs is no offense, but a lot of the times people make stuff up and it's very easy when you're just getting into stuff your mind is just looking for stuff and your mind is just creating stuff that honestly could just be a coincidence so just because you are seeing a name repeatedly yeah because your mind is looking for it that's not necessarily a sign so you gotta know the difference when i found out archangel michael was my spirit guide i kept hearing the name archangel michael and i kept seeing the image of Archangel Michael, and that was his way of introducing himself in a very small and subtle way. So after you invite your spirit guides to show themselves to you, be sure to look around for any specific names of angels that you see, or look around for images of angels, because you'll start to notice you see them quite frequently throughout the day, and whichever one you see the most is likely who your spirit guide is. Now, once you've built a relationship with your spirit guides and you've gotten to the point where you're having out loud conversations with them when you're alone, and yes, that does happen when you build up a relationship with your spirit guides, you'll start to get a lot more comfortable with their presence, and because of that, they will start to manifest. Okay, I just gotta say this, and I know some people are gonna like freak out for me saying this, but here goes. Your archangel is not your spirit guide. They're just not, because 
Like I said before, we are our own spirit guide. You are already your higher self. Everybody is already their higher self. Everybody already has the knowledge and the wisdom and the intuition inside of this that just knows everything, that knows that everything's going to be okay, that knows that everything's going to work out in the end, that just knows the answers. We are already our higher self. So here's what I would do in this situation. I would ask yourself why you're seeking out spirit guides. Like really truly ask yourself that. Like why am I in a position where I am asking spirit guides for answers? Why don't you trust your own intuition? Why are you in a place where you're asking, you know, spirit guides when you don't even really know what they are or who they are or what they're made of or where they came from? Why are you asking those kinds of questions to those kinds of beings instead of asking your own intuition? And by the way, I'm not saying you're totally wrong and you're a bad person and oh my god, why would you do that? But like truly ask yourself why you're doing that. Why aren't you asking yourself these questions? Why don't you trust yourself to know the answer? I would ask yourself that in a time like this. You just say that prayer right before you go to bed. And then while you are sleeping, you will actually be able to meet your spirit guides. Now, there's also some really great meditation music or sleep hypnosis online that you can listen to while you are falling asleep that will also aid you in meeting your spirit guides in your dreams. You can actually find these on YouTube. All you have to do is search sleep meditation to meet your spirit guides. Now another big way your spirit guides will manifest themselves to you is through actual apparitions. A lot of the time spirit guides will actually show up around you as bright white light orbs or smogs of bright light with glitter in it. For instance, the other day I was getting really happy and positive and high energy out of nowhere sitting in my room. I was getting uncharacteristically energetic and happy and then I looked to the corner of my room because I felt called to look there and I actually saw a bright white light orb floating around in my corner and I looked everywhere in my room to see if I could find a reflective surface and I could not find the source of this bright white orb light and then when I looked again it just mysteriously disappeared. So that's another big way your spirit guides will manifest themselves to you and remember when this happens you should be feeling uplifted happy you'll have a surge of energy you'll almost feel high off of life because your spirit guides are higher dimensional beings so when they're around you they will actually elevate your mood they will make you feel euphoric remember guys it's really important to listen to your intuitive feelings and really be mindful of all the synchronicities that you're feeling and picking up because spirit guides are spiritual beings so a lot of the times they won't show up as full-on manifestations, but they will show up as little hints and whispers and maybe a little apparition in your sight. And even though it doesn't sound big, trust me, when it happens to you, it'll be very shocking and a very spiritual experience. So be sure to really, really tune into that intuition and open yourself up properly to see all of the signs that your spirit guides are around so you too can make contact with them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as usual, I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, so here's what I would recommend. You know, it is very tempting and it's very exciting when you're getting into this stuff. Whoops. It's very exciting to look to spirit guides and look outside of us, you know, for all these answers. And to some degree, yes, there is stuff outside of us. There is. Whether you want to believe it or not, there is stuff outside of us. There just is. So on one hand, yes, it is a good belief to have that, you know, we're not just this. We're not just skin. You know, there's energy and there's other beings out there. However, it is so important to know thyself and this is what one of my spiritual teachers always says to us know thyself because if you do not know who you are you don't know what's coming into your field and you don't know what's good versus what's not good for you so get into the habit of asking to feel what things feel like 
And something really easy you can do is if you don't know if something is authentic or not. You know, you want to, you're doing a meditation and you see this super hot, attractive Jesus and a robe and a beard and you're like, oh my God, it's one of my spirit guides. But if there's a part of you that's like, hmm, I don't know if I should trust that or not. Ask that thing to come into your heart. Come into your heart because your heart really cannot lie to you. Lie to you. Your heart is true. You know, just how they say in fairy tales and what and whatnot. Your heart can't really lie to you. So ask to feel what things feel like. Ask that thing to come into your heart and show you what it feels like. And if it feels like crap, ask it to leave. If it feels amazing, then, you know, explore more. Ask questions. Say, where did you come from? Who are you? Why am I talking to you? But... As you guys will probably learn and as you, you know, kind of start to open yourself up more to spirituality, you're going to learn that, you know, the best thing you could possibly ever do is just ask your own intuition. Ask your own intuition, get to know yourself more, and just trust yourself because the second you start pulling in all these beings from outside and asking for all this outside guidance from all these different angels and lords and archangels and fairies like it just gets super unsafe and it gets super chaotic and it's so easy to get things coming in that could you know lead you astray and just because you're seeing something doesn't make it good and doesn't make it right you know because at the end of the day, we're controlled by our subconscious mind. And we were like, we've been programmed, you guys, like since birth. We were programmed by school, by society, by the news, by TV, by our parents. Like just because something comes in that we see doesn't make it good, doesn't make it true. So you have to really get into the habit of pulling things into your, into your heart, seeing how it feels, you know, getting to know yourself more. Because at the end of the day, like there's not really a huge necessity to seek spirit guides because we all have an intuition inside of us that can lead us in the right direction if we allow it to. So thank you guys for tuning into this reaction video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you want me to react to next. And like always, please subscribe to this video for more videos. And thank you for watching and I will catch you guys next time.